Welcome to Three Films in a Podcast, the show where Destiny brought together three friends to enhance each other's cinematic journey by watching three new movies in a series of themed rounds. There is no claim of ownership on any film footage used in this episode, as all film footage is owned in its entirety by the copyright holders. And just like every car in Too Fast, Too Furious, this podcast contains spoilers. Enjoy! Alright, hello, welcome to Three Films and a Podcast. My name is Tyler Beck, this is Benjamin Lawhorn, this is Matthew Weiler. We are three friends uh, challenging each other and all of you to expand your cinematic horizons through a series of themed rounds. Uh, basically what we do is we pick a criteria and we each pick a movie that matches that criteria. We watch them, we talk about them, you listen, you subscribe, you love it, you tell all your friends. Follow us at at Three Films Pod on all the socials. Um, this is the first episode of season three of the podcast. Yes. Uh, and the criteria for this round is movies so bad. They're scary. Ooh, <laughs> uh, and to kick it off is my selection. We went with, well, I went with the 2003 film by none other than the visionary genius, Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Uh, we're talking about the room. Yeah, um, and we're just going to jump right in here. We're going to get right into our personal experiences and thoughts on the movie. And Ben, since I learned about this movie through you, I'd like you to kick it off. Uh, I don't, I'm curious. <laughs> I don't remember where I learned about this movie. Like, right. I don't know how it came about. Like it just must've been some, I feel like it's, you know, buddy Hulse, like from the airport. I feel like it's something he would have shown mm -hmm. me like, Oh, you got to check this out. <laughs> And just watching the scenes and just like the, oh, hi, Mark, like that kind of thing. Right. Like, okay, I need to find this movie. So I remember I watched it and then I got the book written by the co-star Greg Sestero called The Disaster Artist, which like they based the movie off of. And just reading about it, like the stuff I was telling you guys about, like Tommy, you know, he shot this on film and digital at the same time, which like <laughs> you don't do at all. And like he he bought both of the cameras instead of like renting them. So like, just like the backstory behind it. One of my favorites is that the character is named Mark because he thought Matt Damon's name was Mark, <laughs> Mark Damon. And he's just like, now we're just going to roll with it. You know, I've been corrected. Like just knowing that that was the story behind this. Like, okay, I, so, and this is like just fantastic. So um, I was lucky enough to actually see it uh, in person with Tommy in um i was in london and at the prince charles theater and wait is this the first time you'd seen it no this was the second time oh, okay. i'd seen it um but it was the first time with an audience which i feel like i talked about maybe during our um rocky horror picture show episode mm. because there's a lot of like audience engagement here that i yeah. didn't know about um you know stuff i told you about like the set directions like they kept moving photos you know like throughout the house just so they didn't have to buy multiples like <laughs> let's just buy the same three we'll move it for every shot <laughs> but they had the stock footage or stock photo inside of it. And one of them is a spoon. So when you're watching it in the theater, everybody throws plastic spoons <laughs> during that moment. <laughs> just like it happens more than you think throughout the movie. Right. Or, you know, we have like the panning shots of the golden gate bridge and everyone's like, go, go, go. Like just as it like pans the entire, like it's just so funny. And there's like, there's dialogue in here where the mom's talking to Lisa, like you can't support yourself. And everybody in the theater yells out, cause she's a woman. <laughs> like there's so much dialogue like that. That's just explained. Cause Tommy's like, oh, she's a woman. She can't take care of herself. What it's like, she's going to do. It's insane. But that was one of the coolest experiences of my life was seeing that movie in the theater yeah. and then getting to like meet him and, you know, have him like sign a, a copy of the movie was pretty cool. But yeah, I don't know. And I've watched it, I think maybe once or twice since then. And then, you know, we just watched it now. So I, I, I love it. I told you guys, like, I was worried that, I mean, on a different level than Parasite, but I was worried that I'd hyped it up too much. Yeah. So like, I don't yeah. know that this can live up to what I've been saying. Like, is this just bad, bad, or is this like bad, funny? And I think, you know, judging by our reaction, during I the mean, movie, I still you guys have a headache. It. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, for the, for you watching or listening, we literally just turned the movie off to, to, we just watched it to record this. And like, I had to settle myself down. I've, Thought I was going to take laughing. a nap. Yeah. Um, and actually we have a surprise treat. We filmed the, our reactions watching the movie. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Um, and that was my first time ever seeing the movie. Obviously I picked it. Um, I remember we were in San Francisco one time on a job and they were playing it at a theater. Mm. And that's how I learned about it. Cause you 
started talking about it. Yeah. And I was, had been hooked ever since I knew it took place in San Francisco. I love San Francisco. Stay tuned later. There'll be more talk about that. And just hearing your experience, you told me some of those like audience participation things. And I just knew I was like, this movie has to be unhinged. And it absolutely (laughs) is. There's no way you could have prepared me for the way this movie ends. I, I want people to be able to have, if you, I want you to have an experience with this movie that I did. So if you haven't seen it, I don't want to spoil it for you, but uh, just, you said you were worried that you had like overhyped it. And I don't think that's possible with this movie. (laughs) So there's no way to prepare you for what you're about to watch. Like, even if you know, it's going to be bad or laughable or whatever, but um, Matt, what did, so I actually don't know. Had you seen this before? I had not. I did not. Um, a number of years ago, I saw The Disaster Artist. Okay. Me and my brother went to see that. I was very intrigued yeah. by this movie. Sure, yeah. how could you not be? But I, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't this. It seems like it comes into town and like will play places, but it's yeah. not like an easily accessible movie. No. Right. right. Wait, we had to watch. So we had to watch it on the Blu ray because there was, there's no streaming copy. Yeah, right? Tommy's kept all the rights to it. So the only ways you can legally watch it. Or is if you go to a theater where they're showing it, because he'll t- he still tours the world with yeah. it, or you have to buy the DVD or Blu-ray from his website. Like okay. it's not it's not legally streaming anywhere. You can watch it on YouTube and stuff like that, but yeah, yeah I respect kept all the, the hell out of that man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I I never had the opportunity to watch it, yeah. but uh, Tyler picked it and uh, we watched it, and here <laughs> we are. It, it was fun to know some of the backstory there, um, but I didn't. I envy Tyler's experience going into this completely blind. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, not knowing. Anything. Yeah. I had purposely avoided the disaster artist. I really wanted to see it, but I just, I just knew that I had to watch the room first and I'm glad that I did. Um, shoot. I had a, had a point, but I lost it. I, I was going to say like, I forgot a, how many sex scenes there are. In oh my it. God. And like two, just how many of them are in the first 30 minutes of the movie. I mean, we really get going. There. It's just, yeah. It's like the, I, I joked about it with them as we were watching. I was like, I'm afraid my mom's going to walk in right now. Like, there's yeah. no way that's well, happening. We, were, we, we filmed like, our reaction video like, and I'm the prude of the group. So I'm like looking away and I'm like, <laughs> like watching it with their dad. Yeah. It was just like, it, I but you can barely even call them sex scenes because no. whatever it's going on on the screen is, is not that. No, yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's, it was so weird. It's like, yes, go like a 12 year old to explain what sex is. And that's like what they filmed. You well, that's, know? Like, so that's, oh, that's what I was going to say earlier. I, I love this movie for all the reasons that I think they made the disaster artist. Yeah. Is like you alluded to the fact that he holds all the rights and the only way you can watch it is if it's either you buy it or you go to these experiences mm-hmm. and like, despite how terrible this movie might be and other people have talked about this. So we're not like, you know, breaking any news here, but you just, I just have to respect the fact that he did it and it might not have been uh, the movie he, no, I think he made the movie he wanted, but like he's found this, he found success through Mm -hmm. it. Right. Like he got what he wanted. He got his sort of like monkey paw Hollywood dream. Right. It's like he wished for, he wished for fame and fortune and the little finger (laughs) curled. This is is what he got. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, it's the genie thing of like, I'll give you what you want, but not how you're expecting it kind of thing. Like I'm excited for you to see the disaster artist and hear what your thoughts are. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. I, um, I don't even really know what else we can say about this movie critically. I guess, Let's just talk about, I mean, this whole movie, I want to do elevator pitch. I want to talk about favorite scenes, but yeah. like the way this movie is put together, I mean, there are certainly scenes, but it's just like a barrage of one. We have no idea like what day it is. <laughs> no, we see, no it concept seems, of time. It seems yeah. to take a place within a week or so, I but it could so. have been a month. It could yeah. have been, could have been one big day. It could have been one day. <laughs> um, you know, people, come in and out of that door. It's always the same light outside, you know, so which is, which is all things that are tough for an amateur filmmaker to reconcile, right? Like I couldn't do it either. I'm not bashing him, but it's just like, it's, it's hard to pick a scene because it's, it's all just like kind of one long scene. And I think if I'm being honest, if I were to tell someone a reason to watch this movie, I would just maybe like, point them to an article about the movie or I don't know. So it's hard. I think the only scene that I could possibly pick for my elevator pitch, uh, which is what we're doing now. We're we're moving into the elevator elevator pitch. All that to say is we're doing the elevator. (laughs) Before we get started, there's 
anyone want to get out? I just think I'd have to pick the oh hi mark. Oh yeah. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh hi mark. Because you've probably already seen it. If you haven't seen the room, you've probably already seen that scene. Um, and most of the other scenes are sex scenes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so, a lot of them. Which sure, you know, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna have an awkward conversation on an elevator, might as well show them an awkward sex scene. But the oh hi mark thing. I thought that was going to be the highlight of the movie. And yeah. in some ways it was like a, a throwaway for how insanely hilarious the rest of the movie was to me. Yeah. Arguably like there's a funnier thing that happens like 20 seconds later, right. you know, and I'm just like, Oh, this girl was beaten up and had to go to the hospital. Like, oh, what a story. It's like, <laughs> what? you don't respond like that. It's crazy. That's not how you respond to this. Like one of them found out about it, beat her up so bad. She ended up in a hospital on Guerrero street. <laughs> What a story, Mark. Yeah, you can say that again. I think it's a great pick. I think, again, like that goes into some of the, the backstory of the making of the movie because they actually shot in San Francisco, like, and they had access to a rooftop where they yeah. shot it, but he decided to, like, build a set with a green screen for, like, no real reason, like, <laughs> yeah. other than, like, maybe light Just control. To do it. But, yeah. yeah. So, and like, that's what's the green so funny. It's like horrible. light control, but you shot it from the same, it's the same time of day. Yeah, exactly. Every, if you're going to have the light control, you might as well at least. And that rooftop is 20 by 20. Right. Yes. Like that's not a big <laughs> rooftop. Like that's why you have to underhand throw the football. But yeah, I think that's like, I mean, that's a reason they, I think it's the first teaser trailer we got for the disaster artist. Yeah. Is Franco trying to do the, I did not hit her. Like yeah. it's that exact scene. And that's because it's like, it's probably the scene for the movie. Yeah. Like, I think it's, it's a great choice. I love it. Well, and it's <laughs> every single time he sees a person, it's oh hi, Ben. Yeah. Oh, hi. Even if like, if I'm looking directly at you and. Oh, the best one though is like, oh, hi, Chris R. Yeah. Like we did not meet another Chris <laughs> the whole movie. And it's just like, it like, could have been yeah. in the deleted scenes. We didn't it watch all the deleted yeah, scenes. Yeah, I guess we don't know like, like the bad guy's name is. We don't know like, oh, hi, Chris R. Yeah. <laughs> Chris M and Chris So wait, R. who is, so, okay, you said bad guy. Who's the bad guy in this movie? I mean, I guess it's Lisa. Lisa. Yeah, yeah. I guess Lisa's probably our antagonist. Like maybe it's supposed to be Mark, but he, I don't know. He's weird the whole time because he's like defending he's wild card. his friendship. Like, no, I love him so much. Like, all right, we can have sex again. He's like, well, he's my best friend. You know, it's, I don't know. And that, that's the other, that's the other part too, is like picking a scene in this movie. It's, it's the same scene every 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a ramp up to her saying, I don't love him to Mark saying it's my best friend to them having sex. And then to him saying they can never do it again. And just like, yeah, cycling. that's my future wife. Mark. Yeah. Is Johnny does not know the word fiance. I think we established that while well, we were watching this. All of a sudden, like Mark out of nowhere, like decides that he's done with Johnny. Yeah. But they've never had a negative interaction. Like, right. Yeah. They've never had. Yeah. They're yeah. just hanging out and like having a good time the whole movie. Well, and I guess like, when I'm he done says with that, that creep. they had yeah. the fight at the birthday party, but still that was all oh, one true. night. Right. Yeah. That was within like an hour. Yeah. We think, who knows? There's no time in this movie. There's no, yeah. There's no time. And I love to, like you pointed this out, like, and I couldn't help but notice it after you, pointed it out but mark fucking hates that he's in this movie <laughs> oh yeah every yeah. scene he's in it's like he's phoning it there's a few uh, scenes where he kind of like yeah tries a little bit maybe those they shot those first you know what i mean but there's moments where he just has so much contempt for what he's doing it's unbelievable it's so fun it's to watch. it's another reason like again like i love the book this is this is just gonna be like ben's trivia corner but no it's great i love this one of the, my favorite parts and i think they bring it up in the movie is that johnny asked him to shave his beard but Greg was actually like got hired for a job, I think on like Malcolm in the middle or something like that, but they want him to keep his beard. Oh, but Johnny's like, no, you need to shave it. You need to be a baby face. And he's like, no dude, I have like an actual role. <laughs> and so like, when you see him come in next time you watch it, you just see how angry he is that he had to like shave it. Cause he lost the other role. I think because oh, he had to shave. No way. Yeah. But way. he was like, From contractually Malcolm in the applied. Middle? I think that's what it was. Like <laughs> in the movie, he meets Brian Cranston as Brian Cranston. I think that's what he was shooting in 2003. Okay. Maybe it was a movie or something like that, but it's just kind of, you know, hinted that Brian Cranston is directing and he has a role that he's trying to fill. And I think it was like a lumberjack role. That's why he wanted his beard. But then, uh, you know, whatever Tommy's like, no, you need to shave it. It's like, oh, dude, oh, I'd, be, I'd be so pissed too. Wow. Watching him walk in. But yeah, man, I don't know. This so movie, in that yeah. in that book, did it talk about like, who were these actors? What were they up to? Or are these like people trying to get their break? Yeah. Like, I think yeah. it was. I mean, that's yeah. how it would have to be, but it was just, there was, there was, uh, I think like the psychologist we mentioned, like he had some chops. You know yeah, what I mean? Like sure. there were some people that were like doing some 
acting. Like they were trying, but it's just like, I couldn't get a sense for if these were people that just got booked the wrong gig, shitty yeah. agents. A psychologist or, could play that role in any movie for sure. yeah. and have his career made. He like, looks the part. Yeah. I, I need the straight laced nerdy office dude. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And that's the guy. Yeah. He'd have been perfect. My scene is the flower shop. Oh, um, right. I just love like him parking outside. That's one of the other things. Like parking he can park everywhere yeah. in San Francisco. Like yeah. uh, he just always finds parking, which is great. But, like, but he didn't though. He was on a corner, he was on a corner in front of the sure. red curb. Yeah, I, I, that was so good. Um, but yeah, like he walks into the flower shop in his suit and his sunglasses and the lady's like, oh, like, hi, how can I help you? And then, then he just lifts up his sunglasses. He's like, oh, it's you. It's my favorite customer. Hi, like, Johnny. Hello. It's like, what? You know, like Matt, he brought the points. Like, is it Clark Kent? Like, is it just the glasses? So, like, I just, that whole interaction, it's so rapid fire. It's like, what the cost? $18. Here's $20. Hi, doggy. It was like, it is just like back and forth so quick. It's just like, you're my favorite customer. Like, what <laughs> is happening here? And it's all of it's so bananas too, because we mentioned this in our watch along, but every character is just Tommy Wiseau's voice. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. So you can tell he like, for whatever reason that he thought he needed that scene, I guess he had to justify why he came home with flowers. Yeah. I don't think we need to see of all the things that he didn't. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 totally. Right. But it's just like, Okay, so this is your favorite customer. So you go into this shop all the time. Yes. You don't know the dog's name. Like Hi she- dog. Yeah. If you somehow don't know what Tommy Wiseau looks like, I mean he just has hair. It's like longer than mine. It's like past his shoulder. It is black, kind of greasy. <laughs> He's always in like a suit that's like one size. He's too got like big. a like a it's also kind of greasy on yeah. a hunger strike vibe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like it's a great way to put it. And so the fact that like Thin little Oakley sunglasses <laughs> could like make you like a disguise. Dude, it's just crazy. He I is a person it. that you would be able to spot immediately. Oh, yeah. So I don't know. That's the one I like. There's person. so many, so many great scenes, but I just, uh, that really shows like the rapid fire dialogue that he's just like going through. But like you said, everyone is him. Like the first time we meet Greg in the car when he's talking to Lisa, like, what do you want? I'm busy. Like, he even sounds like Tommy, you know? It's just like, <laughs> this is how he talks. I, I just want to know if like, he like did a lot of like coaching as he directed, like, no, say the line like this. Yeah. And, yeah. Like, they have to say the line exactly as you say. <laughs> like in a walkie talkie. It's like, like yeah. Tommy, but not everyone sounds the same. No, but <laughs> it's so I good. I can't yeah. talk. I'm busy. And, it, and it's like, it's interesting watching a movie like this because most movies they do a, most movies that we, especially the ones that we've watched on the pod, right? Like they're all pretty decent movies Yeah, and they do a, <laughs> it's just interesting watching a movie with so, like someone wrote, that has like zero perspective of, of how anyone else speaks, let alone like yeah. a woman like, oh. or just, I don't know how, I don't know how to articulate it, but just the fact that every character is exactly the same. And like the, like the point you made about she can't take care of herself because she's a woman. Like this is obviously someone that has no understanding or like, respect for a woman yeah. or like, frankly, anyone else. It seems like, he, and he, like but he yeah. also doesn't, I mean, I don't know the guy, but the protagonist that he wrote himself as, he obviously sees himself as a good person. Yes. So he's just like, just him in and of itself is such an interesting character. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just like fascinated by this person who sees themselves in this way, but clearly has no idea about humanity or <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, I well, it's, it's funny like, because, like, he does, he writes everybody in his voice, but also no one really gets, like, to flesh out their characters. Like, they all right. just have to jump to the point, like, well, I have cancer. You know, it's just like, okay. <laughs> and I'm busy. Right, I gotta, gotta go. Yeah, yeah. It's like, but gotta go. See so, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, he wants the house and I'm dying. Like, what, what was the line that she says? Like, oh, yeah. She's like, I'm super busy and I'm dying or something. Yeah, like, like no that. one like, helps me and I'm dying. Or yeah. yeah, something. <laughs> everyone unhinged. just, like, jumps to the point and it's I like, definitely, Dr. Doctor told me I definitely have breast cancer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is how I'm telling you and right I would, now. I would love it because in Tommy's mind, I'm sure the way he heard the doctor telling her was you definitely have breast cancer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's like he took show, don't tell literally because we watch him set up the tape recorder for like 45 seconds. Yeah. Like we don't need to see He's this. He's with the cable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like this is not what we mean by show. Don't tell, <laughs> you know, like you can just like show us the tape recorder and be like, okay, got it. We're doing yeah. this. You know, it's like, 
we don't need the four minute sex scene. Like this is just where you fade in, fade out. Yeah. Got it. We understand what happened. I don't know. It's, it's so interesting. What's your, scene? yeah. So mine, um, we talked about the, the psychologist and my, so we're, we're watching this friend. We're watching a lot of bad movies, three <laughs> and, bad movies. And I'm so excited about it. Cause it's, this it's, is going to be the worst of the three. The room. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I don't think, I don't think it can get worse, but, but it also might be the most fun. I'm looking it, forward it to Wicker be. Man. Yeah. No, it, it, it probably not will the be the most though. fun either, <laughs> but this scene, it's not the worst scene in the movie because like, honestly, this scene in any movie would probably be funny to me, mm-hmm. but like the psychologist, the psychologist and Mark are in the room together at first. And then they go outside on the roof where they act like they haven't seen each other all day. <laughs> yeah. So, like, Mark's <laughs> smoking a joint. Yeah. <laughs> And like the psychologist is just like absolutely shocked and beside himself about it. Yeah. Hey, Mark, what's up? Oh, hey, Peter. It's a good place to think up here, isn't it? Then they have an argument. <laughs> the psychologist this scene is guess, unhinged. The yeah. psychologist guesses that Mark is having an affair and Mark wants to throw him off the roof. <laughs> like immediately, whatever weed Mark is smoking. He needs like laced, he needs a yeah. new dealer. He like he's yeah he's got something laced. That is not good. But you're right. Like this call just comes out. He's like, oh hi Peter. It's like <laughs> you just saw him. Like we just twenty left seconds the same ago. Room and went the same direction. <laughs> and he's like already stoned. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. Just like that's the alcohol thing too, though. He takes yeah. like one sip of that apple juice and vodka or whiskey and vodka, whatever, whatever that mix that was. was. He's like, oh, I'm feeling it. Like, okay, man, but then whatever. Mark was like immediately not stoned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Not, 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 <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Where's off quick. Yeah. Anyway, oh, that, that, that'd be my favorite scene. Like I'd love to see that scene played by a bunch of different actors oh, right? yeah. in sequence back to back to back. Oh, that be would so be good. good. Yeah. See how everyone else will play it. But yeah. honestly, just this is another one. We talk about movies, you know, like the Miyazaki's and handmade and stuff. Like you just pick out a frame and it's artwork. Yeah. This movie feels like you could pick out a scene and just show it to someone because like, this is just how unhinged it is yeah. the whole time. Oh, like, yeah. Like, any any three minute span of this movie is going to have something just like <laughs> what is going on right now? It's it's that for an hour and a half. Yeah, and it's funny like we mentioned this right when it uh, got over, but you know it's an hour and a half, and I was going into it, I was like, okay, this is going to be a grind. Like it's gonna we're gonna feel this ninety minutes. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be funny. We'll laugh, and it'll be a great good time. But it actually went by really fast. Mm-hmm. Like it's a pretty enjoyable experience to watch it. Um, and I think like. I don't know. I I think it's fun to watch movies like this that are quote unquote bad because I'm not necessarily smart enough to pick out like good filmmaking. Like it's one of those things like I know it when I see it, but I can't really articulate it or talk about it eloquently. But a movie like this, it's like such a good example of the opposite, right? You know what I mean? It's just like, it's so obvious. You don't need to know anything about film to just know this is objectively bad. Right. And it's like the stuff that's bad, like pops out at you. Like, why would you show me this? Why would you? It's like a, it's almost like a movie like this should be taught, should be shown in film school. So you could have like a basis of like why these rules apply. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That'd be a really good point. I think that's the, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say here is just like, you know, we watch a lot of movies and we talk about them and we, you know, try to think about things critically and, uh, you know, try to have some analysis, but mm-hmm. it's a, a lot of times I'm like, it's just, they just know what they're doing and they're good at it. You know, it's, yeah, it's exactly. good. It's there's, it's not, it's rated nine on IMDb for a reason or whatever, mm, you know yeah. what I mean? But then this movie, it's like, oh, that's why all these rules are there. That's, you know, like, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's totally true. It's a, a huge exercise and just like, I don't know, just basic filmmaking. It's like, why are there two doors that people <laughs> yeah. come in and like, you've established the outside of this building, you walk upstairs into the building yeah, whenever anyone opens the front door, like sunlight comes in. It's like, that's just not how that works. You know, it's like there's all the practical stuff to it, too, that just like no one pays attention to. It's it's so interesting. And also, like, you know. Tommy was always fine. And what we say has no bearing on his life doesn't matter at all. But I, I want to make it clear, like. You know, he obviously put a lot of time and effort into this thing, right? And that's why, like all these things that you're talking about and all these things that we're trying to talk about, these things that make a good movie, they're fucking hard to do. Yeah. And so it's just actually, it's kind of cool to watch someone who really cared. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. you, you know, his story. And I'm sure if you're watching this, you're familiar with his story, being an immigrant coming here. This is his dream, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's really fucking hard to do. Mm -hmm. And he did it. So I'll give him that credit. And it's cool to see like, 
you know, when it's done right, it really like movies really can be magic and they're yeah. still fun even when they're not, you know what I mean? So I don't know. I think that's one thing I'm looking forward to in this round is to have a little bit more fun with it and like recognizing the different ways you can enjoy it's, this medium, you know, as you're talking about this and just thinking like first time filmmakers, you know, trying to make stuff. I'm just like comparing this to Pather Panchali. Oh <laughs> yeah, just like, totally. They were both looked rough, you know, like you could see, you know, the dolly shaking and Pather Panchali and stuff like that, but it captured the charm. Like it had that stuff and this, you know, they, they both are kind of rough, you know, as yeah. far as like looking at them, but there was just like the something else to it that mm-hmm. just, made i think for you and i it was on our rush more last season like we both yeah. loved that movie and then this one's just the opposite where it's like oh they just everything on this <laughs> do you think like, it's because everything. they told in pather panchali they told a story they understood right like I that think was, so, yeah. it was more it was almost like somewhat autobiographical right like this is not the story that they told in the room is not something that tommy's been through or had experience with right like it seems clear to me but with pather panchali that was like well, I mean, he's he, he was a, a true like artist director, you know, trying right. to tell a story with a film. Where this one, it, it's funny because it he's like a film fan. Like, yeah, totally. He knew he wanted five sex scenes in it. Yeah, yeah. He, Why would he, he knew what he thought that looked like? Right. He also knew that he wanted this like relationship drama. Totally. With no experience on how to like even set stakes for characters at all. And so but it's what his we best got, friend. <laughs> it's, it's his best friend. But, but we got was the same scene over and over again. Right. Yeah. Just regurgitating the same dialogue over and over again. And uh, yeah, I think, I think he is a big fan of certain things that he knew he wanted in a movie. It reminded me of like being a teenager and you have this friend who like has this idea for a movie and like you all get together and you, you tape it yeah, and they've got this idea in their head and you're like trying to do it and you watch it. It's like absolute garbage. Yeah. <laughs> That's what this movie was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that makes totally. sense. And it's funny. I think we'll talk about it in just a sec, but there, there are so many stock shots of scenery here in yeah. San Francisco, but that was one of my favorite things about last black man in San Francisco is how they showed the city. Yeah. It looked beautiful. It was amazing the way they showed it. And all this stuff was just like, Pan up, pan down. It's like Reminder, we're going to show the San city Francisco. again. Like here's the fourth shot of the Golden Gate Bridge, and it's another thing where a like shot the, on the, the same day. Like, yeah, well, exactly. That, that's the other. I mean, that's a good point. And I think like comparing to Pather Panjali is like there is a lot more. He's way more intentional with his filmmaking. Like, yeah, he's choosing these shots. He's choosing this shot and like that direction, that pan, because it's like moving the story along that way, or maybe it's symbolic in some way. And like Last Black Man, like those shots are contributing to the story. Yeah. What? Yeah. And that was my thought with Panther Bench Holly. That's why I thought about last black man. Cause like, well, maybe he had a more beautiful like scenery, I guess, in Panther Bench Holly to show off. It's like, no, like we've seen San Francisco shot. So wonderful. There was no pointless, like one of the most shots. photographic. Like, yeah, exactly. It's one of the most yeah. photogenic cities in the world. Yeah. And the way they showed it in this, it was just like over your head. Like we're still in San Francisco. It's like, <laughs> But I now know. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. Now we're by the Disney store. It's like, okay, whatever. We'll you know, just like, here for five seconds before we cut away from it. Yeah. It, it's just like, it, it's also kind of funny. Cause they like never went downtown to the business district, which is like, has some of the most like notorious buildings in San Francisco. Yeah. It's like, no, we're just going to like, I mean, we saw a lot of Quake again. tower. Yeah. We yeah. It was a lot bridge. of Quake tower. Whatever the, the name bridge. of that cathedral is. I can't remember. Yeah. That, um, is a planetarium, like whatever. Yeah. Kind of as well. Oh but, yeah. The uh, palace of fine arts. Yeah. yeah. So they just like keep showing the same stuff, but I don't know. <laughs> well, sucks. speaking of San Francisco, <laughs> yeah. Um, not only is it one of our favorite cities collectively, right? Oh You're yeah. A San Francisco oh, yeah. fan. Big fan. You better be. <laughs> I went to San Francisco on my honeymoon. Oh no shit. Nice. That's awesome. Well, I've never had a honeymoon, so thanks for rubbing it in. <laughs> Luna de miel. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, we love San Francisco. I think we've mentioned that a few times on the pod and we've watched yeah. a couple of San Francisco movies. Uh, most notably, we watched Vertigo in mm-hmm. season two, right? Pretty early. two, Hitchcock, yeah. Pretty early in either, either early season two or late season one. I think that was early season, season one. one. Hitchcock, Hitchcock, Spielberg, and Kubrick. I think that was season one. Yeah. Regardless, we watched it. We loved it. Uh, and it takes place in San Francisco. And they have an iconic shot of the golden gate bridge that I still mm-hmm. think about this to this day. 
uh, with, uh, I forget the character's name, but she's holding the flowers yeah. before she jumps in. But anyways, we want to do, uh, we want to head over to our Rushmore mountain mm-hmm. and we want to talk about San Francisco movies. So that's what we're going to do right Let's now. Do it. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? Uh, and as mentioned, we're going to put, so the way this works is we're each going to pick one San Francisco movie that we love uh, and add it to the list. There'll be four movies in total. Uh, we're going to plug in Vertigo into the list. So mm-hmm. we've got one built in and each of us are going to pick one to make up our total of four. Uh, and Matthew, I'd like to hear yours. Okay. Well, we actually kind of, we didn't allude to this movie, but uh, we talked about how tiny or Tom. Tiny. Tiny Tom. Tiny Tom. <laughs> Tommy Wizzo <laughs> is kind Christmas of like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tiny Tom. Tiny, it's like, Tiny Tim. This is his brother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we talked about how like the way this came about where like he's he's essentially like living, you know, the, the life of like a, a movie director or like a successful movie director, but with this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And how we, we likened it to like a genie. Right. Um, wishing for to be like a famous movie director and this is what Tom, this is what Tommy yeah got. he got um, it he got fame yeah <laughs> well if we're talking about movies in San Francisco then I have to shout out the underrated Brendan Fraser classic Bedazzled with Brendan Fraser and Elizabeth Hurley where Elizabeth Hurley plays the devil mm-hmm. and boy does she ever <laughs> Brendan Fraser makes some deals with her to get the wishes that he wants and I'll tell you what it's not exactly what he's expecting Watch yourself, Hi, Jinx and Sue. Is that what you're telling us? Wow. You got to watch it and find out. I have not seen it from the trailer when it came out. I just remember him. I think one of the things is he's like a basketball player or something like that. Does that happen? I That's just remember normal. Elizabeth Hurley. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't seen it, so. but maybe, maybe we'll add it to the list. Maybe you have a Brendan Fraser room. Well, he's having a renaissance as yeah, he is. Of, of sorts. Unfortunately, not the Batgirl as much as we all. Mm. I really wanted to see him in that. It would have been so good. I know Warner, Warner, if you're listening to this, release it. We'll do a watch along with that one. Just yeah. send, us, send us the footage. We'll watch Come it. Come on, Warner. <laughs> Let us know. Um, I'm going with, you, you know, we talked about Vertigo. I think honorable mention between all of us is Last Black Man in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, but one of my favorites is the Fincher film called The Game, um, which is, I don't know, it's such a good movie. Sean Penn, Michael Douglas. I don't really know how to talk about it without getting into it, but essentially they're brothers and Sean Penn signs Michael Douglas up for this thing called the game. Yeah. And he just has no idea who's actually involved with it. And it like infiltrates into his everyday life. It's sort of like, um, it's almost like if eyes wide shut was less about being in that house and that sex cult and more about like, high society hijinks out in the world. You know yeah, what I mean? It's like yeah. a secret society out in the open. Yeah. Hmm. I guess it's the best way I could describe it. And you put, you recommended it to me a long time ago. And that movie is fucking awesome. I just, the only, my only thing is I forget it's in San Francisco because I get so caught up in the game. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. It's not something that I necessarily like immediately think of San Francisco. Like the first thing I've thought of at all was bullet. Uh, the Steve McQueen movie. Mm. Maybe it has like the great car chasing through San Francisco. But, you know, we pulled up a list and we kind of looked it over. I'm like, the game, I think, is the one that I would, you know, pick to watch or to add to this. So, that movie rules. It's a really great movie. Also um, an unsung gem, I would say. Yeah, a great thriller. So if you haven't seen the game, check yeah, it out. Check it out. Um, I'm having a hard time with mine. I really do want to pick. There's a few that I would like to pick. Uh, Last Black Man uh, being one for sure. Um, the first one that popped in my head was So I Married an Axe Murderer. Mm. Um, one man. I just, <laughs> I don't know why, but there was something about it when I first saw that, that, that really felt, this is before I had too much experience with the mm-hmm. city of San Francisco, but it felt like what I thought of at the time when I think of San Francisco, like the beat poets and all yeah, that yeah. weird stuff. I'm not weird. For whatever reason, that's been like, that was almost like my first impression of San Francisco. Mm-hmm. We'll see that movie. Uh, for better or for worse. I haven't seen it in years. But. I have a weird relationship with that movie where uh, I came home sick from, you know, a, a mission that I served for my church. And it was the only movie that I owned, I believe, or only movie I could find that was dubbed in Portuguese. Okay. And so the first time I watched it was in Portuguese. because I, you know, I went to Brazil and I was like, I need to watch something like with the language. And so that was the very first movie. That's the first time I watched it. 
And I always think about that, but that is, that's How a great that? movie. Wow. I love that movie. That movie <clears throat> maybe had the biggest expectation swing that I've ever seen in a movie. And what mm. I mean by that is I knew like it was a Mike Myers movie and I'd heard it was funny and I'd heard like my friends did impression of like he and all that stuff. Yeah. Right. I have a big head. So I heard that quite a bit. Um, but like Mike Myers is very Mike Myers to open the oh, movie. Yeah. And so when it, that, that very first scene, like, hello, I thought I ordered this little, little <laughs> the, large, yeah, the large or whatever. Yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, this movie's going to suck. He's yeah. going to be doing way too much here. <laughs> yeah. But that's the only moment you get it. And I almost feel like he was like, you have to let me do my thing once. Mm-hmm. I have to be Mike Myers once. And they let him. And I really love that uh, <clears throat> the way that scene works where they're cleaning the, cu- the, the cup. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They follow the cup through the diner yeah. or whatever. They clean it. So... I'll probably pick So I Married an Axe Murderer. Let's just etch it in there. That's, Let's do that'll that. be my All pick. Right. But I do want to mention Inside Out. We talked about that oh, before yeah. we started recording. And what I love about that movie is I saw that after I became more familiar with the city. And they did such a good job. Of and more familiar with your feelings. Way mm-hmm. more familiar with yeah. your feelings. <laughs> more but no, I thought they did such a good job animating the city. Like it was very true to yeah. how I remember the layout of the city. Mm-hmm. Like where she goes to play hockey. That's actually what it looks like. It's down yeah. by the bridge. You know, it's those uh, weird ha- old hangar buildings from mm-hmm. the army barracks. Um, I don't know. Great movie. Mm-hmm. Pixar yeah. knocks it out of the park. Disney animation has a movie called B- big hero six. And that takes place in San Francisco. It was kind of a mix mm. of Tokyo and San Francisco, which is really cool. So cool yeah. I just want to shout out that movie. That's another, I think really underrated movie. Oh, yeah. I love big hero yeah. six. So yeah, it's, so good. Yeah, it's yeah. another, another good one, but I, yes. Yeah, so I married Axe murder is a great, a great choice. Well, that settles it then. That's it. That'll round out the rush. <laughs> wow. Boys, do you think there's anything else we could talk about with this movie that hasn't already been said? I mean, I don't know. By but us or anyone else? How's your sex life? Should we get into that? <laughs> <laughs> Should we wrap it up with that? Everything hurts and I'm dying. Here. What, did, what did you say? Um, yeah, okay, I think that's... got to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, we do got to go, actually. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, that'll wrap it up for this one. Um I hope you had fun listening along. We had an absolute blast with this movie. Check out the uh, the reaction video. Just three dudes watching the movie. Three dudes in a yeah. movie. Um, what else do you want? But yeah, give us a follow. All the socials at Three Films Pod. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. Watch on YouTube. It's our recommended way to consume the pod. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben does a lot of work there, and Matt puts out incredible visuals to go along with it. So um, yeah, check us out. Tell your friends, and uh, we'll see you next time. See ya. I like they say check us out as if check us out. You're not already checking us out at this point. William, move your head. Look at the size of that boy's head. Shh. I'm not kidding. It's like an orange on a toothpick. Shh, you gotta give the boy a complex. Well, that's a huge noggin. It's a virtual planetoid, has its own weather system.